Welcome. In this demo, we'll show you a live screen capture of a large scale volumetric cloudscape rendered by Intel One API Rendering Toolkit. In particular, this demo makes heavy use of three render kit components. Intel Open Volume Kernel Library, or OpenVKL, supporting all volume computation used in the render. Intel Osprey provides the renderer and scalable multi-server rendering using a 10 compute server cluster we've named Black Panther. An Intel Osprey Studio, a flexible application front end for interacting with the scene and test driving render kit's latest features. Keep in mind that their variable density and light altering properties make clouds particularly hard to render realistically. Also, no denoising is used purposely. We'll begin by exploring individual clouds, which we'll later use to form our full cloudscape. All the clouds were simulated in SideFX Houdini and our VDB format volumes with OpenVKL's recently added VDB volume support and its fast volume kernel implementations. We're able to render these with interactive performance. Osprey Studio allows us to change nearly any parameter of the scene or renderer. Here, we're able to interactively move through the simulation time series and quickly manipulate the look of each time step. We can also update rendering settings. Here, we change the position of the sun live to see the look of the cloud under different lighting conditions. And we can do the same operation for each cloud we'll use in our combined cloudscape. Here we have multiple types of clouds. First, we have our mediocrous clouds which will be our dominant fluffy clouds in the scene. And second, we have wispy practice clouds. Altogether, the 16 individual cloud series created consume half a terabyte of memory, and we take advantage of Black Panther's Intel Optane persistent memory to keep all the data readily available. Moving on, we created a single 3D scene of the entire curated VDB format cloudscape using instancing, taking about 30 gigabytes of memory. This cloudscape scene is quite challenging from a performance perspective. With Osprey, we're able to leverage our 10 node cluster and transparently, without modification to the application or renderer, split the render load across multiple systems. Under the hood, this uses Osprey's MPI features to distribute work and composite the final frame buffer. The end result is that we're able to maintain interactive frame rates, even while still using computationally expensive render settings. As before, we can manipulate other parameters of the scene through Osprey Studio user interface. Osprey maintains good volume rendering performance through OpenVKL in several ways. First, Osprey uses OpenVKL's vector-wide sampling APIs to sample many locations in a single call, which under the hood is able to leverage SIMD instruction sets such as AVX512. Beyond sampling APIs, Osprey also uses OpenVKL's interval iteration APIs. This lets the renderer efficiently skip empty or sparse regions of space and also get tight bounds on volume measurements for improved efficiency in the path tracer. Let's show you some of the more interesting views in the scene. And those are the capabilities we wanted to highlight in this brief demo. Recapping, we showcased OpenVKL, which can be used by any renderer to improve volume rendering capabilities and performance. We also showcased Osprey, which provides scalable and extensible rendering infrastructure. 
This can be used for render preview and interactive applications to accelerate authoring and other artist or look development workflows. Finally, we've shown you Osprey Studio, which provides a clean and simple application front end for test driving all of Osprey's bleeding edge features. We'll finish up the demo with some fully path traced photorealistic rendered cloud and cloudscape scenes. As a reminder, in this demo, our AI based denoiser, Intel Open Image Denoise, was not used. Check out our other demos to see it in action. Finally, everything you've seen in this demo is or will soon become available as open source, including the VDB format time series datasets we showed. You can see those demos and more info about Intel One API Rendering Toolkit at the URLs provided on the demo site. Thanks.